How's it going, everybody? You gotta press the button. No, you gotta press the button. Hey, everyone. Can you hear me? No. Hello. 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 Alright, cool. How's it going, everyone? Uh, my name is Payam. I'm the founder and CEO of Doha. So we're a concierge app for travelers that makes all entertainment, food, and transportation services available on demand globally. So you can be anywhere from Singapore, New York, Paris, London, Sao Paulo, and always have on-demand access to the services that we offer. So I'm going to go through a demo for you guys so you can see how that works. So standard login screen, Facebook, Google, or enter your email. So we'll just log in with Google there. And this is the welcome screen you see for the first time. Bellhop is your personal concierge that helps you book services anywhere in the world. And you press this button at the bottom. And the services that are available to you will be more or less depending on where you are. So as I mentioned, entertainment, food, and transportation are the three basic needs that everybody has outside of sleep and sex. So you'll always have access to these. And the way we do this is we're essentially like a kayak, but for services. So what we do is we build relationships with all the relevant marketplaces around the world, and then we transact with them through their APIs. So to give you an idea, we click on restaurants, and so it's exactly, it's our experience, but in the back end, this is actually pulling the content and the transactional capability from our restaurant partner, Resi. So you can see all the restaurants available, and uh, you can see all the times. So for example, we click on Novi, you can see all the images, you see the description, the rating, you can select the time. I'm actually going to go back just to make a reservation and in the future to give you guys an idea of how this works. It's just, and then we cancel it. So I'll reserve this table. It asks me for a confirmation. I go ahead and do that. And voila, that shows up in my dashboard. We actually made that booking, so I'm going to cancel it, so we don't go there. Um, transportation. So right now, we have two transportation partners for on-demand, Uber, and for scheduled rides, it's Mozio. So you'd be able to not just book you know, a ride now, you can schedule it for the future. For example, you have a 6 a.m. airport transfer, maybe we could partner with Scoop or something. Uh, um, so you confirm the pickup, you put in a destination, I'll just randomly choose a spot and click get a ride. And we're accessing Uber's APIs. So if I click this button, a driver would show up right now, so I'm not going to do that. Um, but we can, also, we can also schedule a ride, so let me put in an address here. So these are the three basic things that hotels traditionally provide. 
uh, from concierge and restaurants. And now we can actually distribute this for vacation rental marketplaces. So for example, an Airbnb host doesn't have the capability or the infrastructure to provide the same services that a hotel provides. And now they're able to offer all these same services on demand through our platform. We're also looking to plug in our SDKs within, let's say, a two or three star hotel. Again, they don't have the traditional infrastructure of a full service hotel. And within their app, you did, that user would have the same exact experience you see here. So that's, that's Bellhop. Thank you, guys. Any questions? Yeah, I tried to install it. So when is it going to be available? Uh, probably the next month or so. It's a basic benefit of it. <clears throat> concierge aggregator app versus just kind of using individual apps. So as a traveler in a foreign place, you're inherently unfamiliar with what's available there. So for you as a person living in San Francisco, you already know what your favorite apps are. But once you're in Paris or you're maybe even in another city, you're not as familiar. So it's bringing all those local services available to you so you don't have to do all the research and figuring out what the new app is or whatever. But you don't have to be traveling, right? You could be using it for local... Correct. So to, this, to this point, you, you know what those apps are when you're a consumer living in San Francisco. Um, so the value proposition that we, we create once for a consumer, general consumer would be once we have multiple partners within a vertical. So right now, let's say for food delivery, we only have delivery.com. But, in, but in, uh, in six months, we'll also have DoorDash and Grubhub. And so now for the consumer, you now know that you don't have to shop between different apps. You can just go to one place to get everything. Yeah. Who's going to pay for it in the end? Let's look at the it's business. the same price for the consumer side and cover business and revenue model. Okay. Um, we take a cut from our partners. So we're full on partners with each of uh, the supply side. So for example, if you have a ride to the airport, and let's say that costs 100 bucks. And for example, let's say Uber is charging 20% from the driver. We're going to get 50% of that 20%. So we make 10% of the gross. So the driver would get the same, and the, the driver gets the same. The consumer pays the same. We're just taking a cut from our partner. Uh, you would. So I just have an observation. But there's a lot of um, I'm hearing a lot of women in and LGBT community complaining about drivers. They want to actually go with, uh, with their choice of the system. Right. Have you considered that sort of approach towards being, as you do with the restaurant, being able to choose your system of uh, transportation? Yeah, so same, same example that I gave for food delivery applies for transportation. Um, it's a little bit tricky with like Uber, for example, because they want exclusivity within an app. Um, but I think as the market continues to mature, there will be more and more transportation partners that are willing to be a part of the same platform, letting the consumer have a selection of what they want. It's just better for the overall market. Are there more costs than just, if you're taking, a, taking some margin out of the provider, are there more costs for them? So for example, do they have to do anything to get inward with your app? Like no, the, most, any app that exists already has APIs, so it's just a matter of whether or not they want to allow us to access it. There's no additional cost in addition to the APIs developed for the partners. So just a follow-on question then, it, it follows from that then the integration cost you guys are taking on, correct? That's our development cost, yes. There's a small, very small support cost that they have to go back and forth with us over email or whatever questions we might have to do the integration with their APIs, but it's very minimal. <coughs> Why does the customer choose your application website over like a price line or any other? Well, Priceline is a completely different business. Priceline, you're booking hotels and airlines. This is a service-based app. You do we have any competitors right now? Mm, of course, there's always competitors. Is there anybody doing anything similar to us? No. The nearest competitor would be maybe like a TripAdvisor, where it's a content-based platform. Another near competitor um, would be like a, um, there, there were a couple concierge, uh, like messaging-based concierges, like GoButler, uh, but they majorly pivoted because that wasn't a scalable business. It's a completely different thing. 
um, but no very near competitors. What's the uh, process for like getting into too much detail for becoming a partner? Do you, you go to them or can they? Yeah, we're reaching out to them right now. We're not big enough to come to us. But can they come to you though? Of course. <laughs> Contact me. <laughs> Do you want to share an email address for the audience? Uh, yeah, that? it's um, Payam, which is my first name, P A Y A M, at bellhop.me, M E. All right.